Recently, Snowman Gaming uploaded a video talking about Carrion, a single player game where you play as a monster, killing and eating people while you spread around the military base and infect your surroundings. The video is incredibly well made and functions as a great review of the game, telling you about all the different aspects of Carrion that make it a game you should play. From the premise of the reverse horror game, to the fluid mechanics and choices you will have to make in order to destroy those pesky humans, Snowman Gaming talks about everything. If you haven't watched his video and would like to know more about the game, I suggest you watch it. But as you have probably read the title of this video, you might be able to guess the one aspect of the review that I disagree with. I don't think that Carrion is a reverse horror game. Now, this is not Snowman Gaming's fault. Devolver Digital themselves have described the game as a reverse horror experience, emphasizing the fact that the player assumes the role of the deadly monster rather than the usual role of the vulnerable human. Store pages like Steam and GOG have also described Carrion as a reverse horror game, with Steam adding the label of villain protagonist. However, I believe this to be a misnomer. While Carrion is indeed a game where you play as a monster, looking to devour humans and infect your surroundings, these elements alone do not make it into a reverse horror game. So why is Carrion not a reverse horror game? What would it take for a game to be classified as reverse horror? Let's find out! Before we begin, remember to like, comment and subscribe for more videos like this one. Before we begin, I would like to mention that, much like Snowman Gaming, I too am not a fan of horror. Whether it is games like Dead Space and Prey, or movies like The Ring, or any other examples I cannot give because I do not enjoy this genre, I am definitely not a fan. I suppose that I just don't enjoy feeling scared, and would rather feel happy and safe, especially when consuming content. Which brings us to the purpose of horror. Whether it is video games, movies, or watching Courage the Cowardly Dog as a kid, horror is meant to scare the audience. Its central purpose is to make the audience experience fear, dread, and anxiety. This means that the content's triggers are designed to elicit a fear response in the audience. Think of jump scares, music, and invincible villains, for example. However, fear is completely absent from Carrion. While you may play as a monster, killing mostly helpless humans, there is no real element of fear. Sure, whenever helpless civilians see you, they are terrified and they begin screaming and running away. And when you capture, attack or devour any humans, the same terrified screams take place. However, this is not real fear. This all comes back to the trigger-response relationship. If the same trigger, say being next to humans, capturing them or attacking them will always result in the same fear response, shown by the scream of your victims, then is the response even real? If no matter how many times you do the same thing, the same consequence happens as a result, is the consequence real? How are the screams of your victims in Carrion different from you opening a barrier with your tentacles? After all, the same scripted trigger will always lead to the same scripted response. If we wanted to look at more accurate examples where the player's actions cause fear in their targets, I suggest we look at the Batman Arkham series. During the stealth segments of these games, Batman's actions can cause the guard's conditions to go from calm to nervous and even terrified. Naturally, the changing condition causes the guards to behave differently, with scared guards moving in pairs and acting fidgety, firing their guns at the slightest provocation. Yet, despite inflicting fear into these characters, these scenarios could not be classified as reverse horror either. If we were to analyze the response element in these stealth segments, we would see that the one scripted response of fear is merely broken down in three separate stages, each affecting the NPCs differently. However, they are still scripted responses, escalating based upon the same trigger, which is Batman beating the thugs and scaring them in a variety of ways. The scripted, absolute relationship between trigger and response is the same as the one in Carrion, but more varied and with different implications, which is certainly a step in the right direction. For examples of reverse horror games, we would have to look at games such as Dead by Daylight or Friday the 13th. 
Games such as these are described as asymmetrical horror as they pit a number of almost entirely helpless players against an almost entirely invincible monster. Now, despite being generally seen as asymmetrical horror, I believe the term reverse horror would apply as well. The reason for this is that these games truly reverse horror. Instead of you, the player, experiencing fear and anxiety, you cause those emotions for another human being. The fear that you cause through gameplay is real because it is really felt and experienced in a variety of ways by a variety of people. But how does this differ in terms of the trigger response relationship? Given the asymmetrical structure of the game and the abilities given to the player that is currently in the role of the monster, you could argue that the only difference between Dead by Daylight and Carrion is that there are more ways of inflicting the fear response. However, the truth is that there is an infinite amount of ways of inflicting the fear response. Standing in one place of the map, or slightly to the left, or chasing your enemies, or using your abilities to scare them, they can all lead to a fear response. What is more interesting is that the same trigger may not lead to the same response, as different players may find the different things scary. So, while in Carrion and the Batman Arkham series the same response is bound to happen in regards to limited triggers, in games such as Dead by Daylight, the amount of triggers and responses is infinitely varied. However, the most important distinction is that the horror is truly reversed, as it is those other than the player that experience fear. So, there you have it. In order for a game to truly belong to the reverse horror genre, one player must be instilling a sense of fear into other human players. Without this central element of real fear, the game cannot be seen as reverse horror, as scripted reactions to pre-established triggers are not a staple of the horror genre. Playing as a monster or seeing indicators of an enemy's fear levels will never truly turn a single player experience into one that can be called a reverse horror. At the end of the day, the difference is only contextual. Now I have a question for you. Do you think that Carrion could be classified as reverse horror or is the element of human fear too important to be ignored? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you for watching, keep writing. Hey, you made it to the end, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment and subscribe, it helps the channel more than you know. If you are interested in supporting the channel in any other way, we also have a Patreon. For the price of a cup of coffee a month, you can support the content we create and even be included in our videos. It's pretty cool, so give it a look.